Out of all the countries in the world, India is the country with the highest population out of every country. With a population of nearly 1.4 billion, India has three or four times more people than the United States with a measly 300 odd million. But however, even with such a big population, India is not the wealthiest country in the world. So I'm going to change history. Today we're hopping into the Cold War Iron Curtain mod and we will be playing in the 1949 start date as the nation of India. With only one goal, using our focuses, alternating history, and even puppeting nations, if possible. We're going to use the economical mechanic in this mod and become the richest and wealthiest nation on the planet. So without further ado, hopping in as the Dominion of India, let's get it. Okay, so here we are starting in May 1949. And as things starting off, we've got a mixture of positives like ethos independence and quite big negatives like corruption. <laughs> But we're going to sort it all, no problem. We do also start off as a dominion of Great Britain. I don't remember my history all too well, but I think India became independent in the 50s, maybe? I think it was 54? So we're going to get on that nice and quick. Also, if we look to the top, we have GDP 47 billion. That is the value of our country. That is our nation's wealth. And it's not that big. Because if I come to the Communist Party of China, they have a GDP of 68. Over here, we have the Soviet Union with a GDP of 289 billion and the United States of America with 627 billion. God damn Truman. We're going to be playing from 49 to 99 just before the new millennium and we have got a lot to do. So without further ado, let's do some focuses. Now the cool and the annoying thing about Cold War is the fact of with our focuses, especially the election one, they are tied behind certain dates and every turn of a decade there is a new focus tree. So I'm gonna have to roll out these focuses and prioritize which ones I think are more important and right now we are focusing on the Karachi Agreement. The sooner we get independent, the better. Also, this mod has a lot of custom tech, as you can see, and it goes all the way for 2020. We've got a lot of legwork to do, and they do include some interesting bonuses like construction speed, factory output, stability. We also have for computers, which gives research speed and office park income. Because remember, with a custom mod like this, we also have custom buildings. But that's a lot to get into. I'm going to try and make this video as short as it is, so I can't make this an hour long. I don't think you want to watch an hour long. So I'm going to crack on and I will see you in a bit. So the independence movement actually came a lot sooner than I planned. We are now a free nation. The UK just released us in 1950 and I suspended some of my focuses on here just so that I could start pushing down the economical line just a little bit. But now that we are free, I'm going to try and finish this. And first is to execute this guy, Natharam Godse. I have no idea what this dude did, but uh, He's getting off. It's time to put him to the put him to the gallows. And with the establishment of the first Asian games and completing our focus, we have now completed this part of the tree. I also found out who this guy is. Apparently, this is the guy that turned Hitman on Gandhi. So yeah, kind of justified this. But we have now declared the Republic of India. We are currently in 51, and next year we have our general election. So before that, I need to choose what I want to prioritize. So I prioritize industry, which is very, very important, especially with how well it sets me up. Or do I I prioritize the Indian Armed Forces. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to only do one branch of the forces. Reason being is this. Gain one research slot. This is very important. Because in Cold War, most focuses are a minimum of 300 days. Time to research 325. So the more research slots, the merrier. So I feel like I'm going to prioritize that. Also, I have a lot of political power and nothing to do with it. Reason being, yes, I can spend it to change my policies and my laws, but that requires money. And I don't have enough economics in the bank just to change things over just now. So for now, I'm going to spend it on a new system. And that new system is this. If you look underneath Nepal, we have here Republic of India 42%. This is my level of influence. Based on your level of influence, you can start an embargo, start influencing, give them military subsidies, economic exploitation, pay off their debt, give them economic aid, establish a dependent state, i.e. a puppet, or that you can manipulate their politics to think like you. There are so many options you can do in this mod, and I feel like these guys are going to be my first ones. So I need to get my influence in up to 90%. And then after that, I can establish a dependent state. Now, one thing to know with this, it's very important. To establish a dependent state, I think you have to be stronger military-wise and economically, of which we are very much both. 
And the event has finally popped, 1951, general elections, and here I can choose who our leader will be. The INC, the Socialist Party, the Communist Party, or the Bharatiya... Wait, Bharatiya Jana Singh. Yes, that's... I. My Indian is impeccable. But to make a decision, we need to have a look at what we're going to do. The Communist Party is, well, very communistic, and although it is good for industry, I'm not really feeling that we're going to become the richest whilst being communist. The INC seems very democratic. You know, we get a research slot, which is very nice. We get rid of the caste system, which is good, especially with the caste system giving us minus 25 on research and construction speed. The social this party are kind of similar in the sense of they give quite a few buffs but nothing is good and then the Singh party we are arresting the communists crush Hyderabad it's very nationalistic there are a few buffs but it doesn't necessarily help us in the long run long run long run I'm gonna flip a coin okay in my hand I have a coin heads is INC tails is Singh three two one and flip and it landed on tails okay so wait what did I just say head was Singh Tails was... Wait, what did I just say? Hold on. Again. Heads is Sing. Tails is Congress. Three, two, one. Heads. Okay, we're going to Sing. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, no. So I finally made Nepal a state of ours because I established the dependency state. And their leader's now George Takai. <laughs> of all leader portraits but we managed to do so because i paid more attention and i finally worked out how it works so to establish a dependent state you have to be 90 percent influence or higher have 10 foreign projection which we currently have 12 then you must have five times the gdp so i'm not going to be caught out here making the stalin empire the good old soviet onion making them a puppet because they've got 305 billion i'm sorry but i don't have 1200 billion in gdp that's crazy so the 50s were an interesting time but they i didn't remember them being this interesting poland just decided to go to war with germany and even then Although Poland is communist, it's communist Germany they've gone after. But also at the same time, I'm in the process of taking Tibet before China can. It's still a draw of Vietnam. And Jeju Island has gone to <laughs> George Takei because the uh, the Korean War ended in a red victory. Bruh, this is wild. I know I said historical off, but this is just a bit mad. <laughs> And now that we're finally on the last day or last two days of December, it is time to prepare. Our focuses have been a long journey and I'm nearly finished with everything else, but I'm about to start the last part, which is the 1957 election. Now here I can choose a new leader. Again, communism, central or right. Now I've been looking at them and these guys are very good because we can now core Ceylon and Sri Lanka and all that, subjugate Nepal, ally with Afghanistan, very expansive, which is what I kind of want to do as well. You know, bigger borders, more money but i also kind of want to go a little bit historical here and i think that's exactly what i'm gonna do i feel like this might be the best option especially for building up financially so we're gonna go with nehru and i think nehru was actually the historical choice in other news there's no more uh kim il whatever in korea they have kicked him out and they've got a new leader turkey and greece are now part of the ussr's block and i have a lot of money like i have 200 two no i have two trillion dollars with 109 GDP. But this money, I can do some stuff. So if we look at the map here, we've got India, but if I click on Delhi, it says pre-industrial, which means this land, the development, is only 1850. But if I click upgrade state for 450 billion, this is now going to start upgrading to industrial land and that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to start upgrading all of my lands to try and get them all to at least industrial because all of india is pre-industrial right now also tibet didn't work out china took them <laughs> so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna wait until maybe 1958 and then i'm just gonna start invading Burma. You know, we need to get the Raj borders back. And then lastly, we have this. We have financial policies where we have to pay, but we have social policies and we can only use our political power for these. And I'm actually going to change my media law to state media shareholder. By doing so, it gets rid of the minus 10 stability and it also gets rid of the plus 20% stability cost. So by doing this, bing, bang, bong, everything is gravy. And then now that I have an income of 30 billion, I'm going to risk it. Try and change things around. I'm going to spend some money and we're going to go from no education education to small education and hopefully this helps no it does not help that's minus 28 i do not have the money i do not have the money i'm too poor no <laughs> and looking at our time it is now 1959 december which means we are about to turn into the new 
decade and lose this focus tree for good which means i have probably one if i'm lucky focus left in me and i feel like comparing the two i'm probably better off going for this it's going to take away my stability for a couple of days well hundred thousand days <laughs> but once it's done it's done we also have a new puppet and that is the puppet of bhutan dragon flag of asia oh yeah also iran became persia and they're angry again and speaking of being angry the reason why i haven't taken burma is because i changed my ideology back to social democracy before i was nationalist so i could declare war however as a social democracy I cannot justify war if that country has not generated world tension. So for that matter, I have to wait until I'm nationalist or just go after someone like Persia who just wants to eat everything. Also, he kind of looks like Napoleon. And with it being the turn of the decade, our focus we were doing got wiped and we now have a new mega tree. And I'm not sure where to start. We have 1860, oh sorry, 18, 1962 election, 1967 and 1971. So we have a lot of elections over here. We also have economic policies, which I'm going to prioritize. The 1965 war against Pakistan. Interesting. I wonder how that's going to work since the communist nation of Pakistan is part of NATO. Not entirely sure how that one works. We also have Indian armed forces again and our foreign policy where we can choose an alignment. We have protests in Kashmir and border disputes with China and East Pakistan refugee crisis. It's going to get a messy, it's definitely going to be a messy decade. I'm going to do what I can and I feel like I'm probably going to focus right now on foreign policy and economics. Yeah, I think that's for the best. <laughs> But starting off doing a very, very quick recap, we have currently played for basically 10 years. And in these 10 years, our GDP has increased by 60 billion. Now that is nice, but it's not enough. I'm gonna start off by paying off my debt, pay off my debt, bing, bang, bong. We are now debt free. And let's see where our contenders are. The US currently has 900 billion GDP. Ugh. And the Soviet Union at 400. Okay, the Soviet Union's compatible, that's fine. And China at 145. So there is some competition. America is very far ahead of the curve, but if I can just get my production high, get my production high and start pumping out factories like no one's business. These expensive office parks, now these cost me 35,000 on construction, but if I can mass produce these, boy, we're gonna be so loaded. <laughs> It is now the year of 1963 and we have had our election and we went for the centrist, more right-leaning party and uh, Chakravarti is now our new leader and bro, Chakravarti is scary. <laughs> I'm also doing well in Operation Annoy China. They've somehow released Tibet and I am so close to just going ahead and establishing them as a puppet. I just need 400 more political power. Also, on our mission to become rich, the reason why I went right wing is not only so that I can take more territory and get more income that way, but also some of the focuses. Correct the economy. Our economical system will move towards a capitalist model and we start to get closer to the Americans. Now, as far as making money, that's the right decision and it shows. We are currently richer than China. China has have 148 GDP, we have 170, but we are not the richest in Asia. That title belongs to Japan with 338 billion. <laughs> the onion has grown to 600 and the US has grown to 100, well no, not even 1 trillion. So we need to boost our numbers. But if I click here, civilian industry is 70 billion, but our agriculture is 71 billion. Now office parks, I have only eight and they provide 27, which is fantastic. But if I want to boost it for cheaper, I can just go agricultural. Because if I come to my construction tab, office parts cost me 35,000 on my construction cost. But if I go agricultural, they only cost me 10,000. So a very, very big turnaround. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to half my production here of these guys right now. And then I'm just going to lean right into agricultural. So I think the next time I'm going to see you is 65 when we have the war against Pakistan. And hopefully that doesn't get too out of hand. But I need to pull up my socks and hurry up because it's 63. I said 99. Bro, I've got less than 40 years left. I need to get on the grind. I'm going to be honest. This playthrough is kind of stale. And I, I hate that it really is like a dry playthrough. If you are interested in like economical playthroughs, then this is the one because that's mainly our focus. But I like action. This one feels like it's just flopped a little bit. And even more so because, well, there was supposed to be a war in 1965. And it's already October. Nothing has kicked off with Pakistan. I don't know if it's because they've gone communist. I don't know if it's because they're at war with Vietnam. 
I don't really know what's going on. However, I have lodged in Tibet as a puppet. Japan is socialist, and Japan has also said it's okay to be gay in the year of the 1960s, so good for you, Japan. And Persia is still doing their thing. Now, as a centrist nation, again, the same rule applies. I can't declare war on Burma, unfortunately. So we're just gonna do the next best thing. In the current position that I am, I am building my submarines, and I am also in the process of recruiting submarines. We're gonna lock and load, and we're just gonna naval invade Persia. We're just gonna go for it. We're gonna take them out. I need action, I need thirst. I'm thirsting. Let's just get the Macedonian Empire in reverse. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm so angry. I'm genuinely so angry. So we just recorded the most epic takeover ever, and I was filming, and my hard drive just disconnected. My hard drive just disconnected, and it lost everything because where I didn't press stop on recording at the time, and it automatically stopped because of the hard drive disconnected, it didn't save the file, and the file just became corrupted. <laughs> Anyway, I'm just going to keep going about it. The goal is 99. We've got this region now. Afghanistan took Khorasan. We're up to 50 a day. And we're going to go for stability with Metro Police. And I'm just going to keep going for expanding the GDP. And keep building. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. I can't even talk right now. I'm so frustrated. Man, who, who makes... Hold on. Who makes this? Who, who makes this hard drive? Toshiba. Never buy a Toshiba hard drive. They will curse you. I have been through two Seagates and never an issue. But my Toshiba, it disconnects every single damn time. There you go. Anyway, see you in a minute. So things are looking good and we're finally in a really good position. As you can see, our GDP has skyrocketed to $779 billion dollars GDP and that's all thanks to my construction. As you can see I am building so much right now and I've been mass producing my agroponics, I've been mass producing my office parks and that has paid off. Also after eating Iran we got their GDP. We are now in 73 which means a new focus tree and it is very limited so I think this might be our last focus tree. We've got a issue with rebellion economy, military, foreign policy again, inheriting Kashmir it seems, and then two options for our election. And I will probably go towards, I don't know, this seems to establish an alliance with China, so I might take this route. And on the topic of alliances, this is our nation, as you can see. And we also have a few new puppets. And in our new puppetry, we now welcome Saudi Arabia and Thailand. The Indian Empire is far, far, far more than just our own borders. Our influence is greatly expanded. And thanks to that, we are the second richest nation in Asia. No, we are the richest nation in Asia. We have 770 GDP, China has 170, Japan has 400. We are the richest nation in Asia. We're close behind the Soviet Union and very, very far behind the American Empire led by George Wallace. What's going on? We're also richer than France, richer than Britain, and only just richer than Germany. And we also have the Roman Empire. Mom, I'm scared. I want to go home. What's going on? And here we are at the turn of the century. It is now finally 1980 in three days. I have 19 years left of this playthrough and let's see where we're at. We currently have a GDP of 1.7 trillion. No, not even that. 1.07 trillion dollars. And we are the richest nation in Asia, but we are also the third richest in the world. Soviet Union sitting at 108, so we are literally 10 not even 10. Yeah, about 10 million left till I'm above the Soviet Union. And then Reagan. Oh, I love Reagan. I don't know what it is about American presidency. Most of them I don't care. But Reagan, I've just got an affinity for Reagan. I don't even know what he did, but man's was just cool. But anyway, Reagan's got the US sitting at $1.3 trillion. And I don't know if I could beat that. We've also puppeted a few of our neighbors. As you can see, we have Thailand, Lao, Tibet, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia. Now that we're in the last 19 years and the last part of our focus tree is about to happen with our election happening at the end of the year, I have limited options on what to do and how to get my GDP up. So we're gonna do the best thing we can do. Build infrastructure to annex our puppets. <laughs> so I guess I'll see you at the turn of 1990 unless something major happens. Oh yeah, Afghanistan blew up because of the Soviet invasion. 
Okay, it's 1983, and as you can see, India is a little bit bigger. We've gone ahead and annexed our puppet of Saudi, and that has brought our GDP up, up to 1.15 trillion, which is absolutely amazing. By doing so, we are just short of the Soviet Union, very short of the French, and very, very short of Jerry Brown's America. But once again, I think it's because it's late game, but my focus tree is not popping. This is not popping. This is not popping either. So I feel like here, I'm just gonna, it's gonna be a race to the finish line. 1999 is the last year. I now have East Pakistan as a puppet as well. I'm just gonna keep expanding my puppets, building and annexing, and hopefully after all of that, my GDP will come good. This really wasn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> this this was not worth it. All of this suffering was pointless. Why have I done this? And here we are in the final stretch. It is 1990 and have I got a surprise for you. As you can see, we have annexed all of our puppets. However, for this last century, we've got one goal left and that is to maintain ourselves as the leader. Thanks to all of this land and all of these expansions, we now have a national GDP of 1.7 trillion. We are richer than Bush's America, who are sat at 1.6. We are richer than Milteran's France at 1.4. And we are richer than Beria's Soviet Union at 1.3. However, there's only one way to secure it, and it's by making China a puppet and annexing them. As you can see, Mao is no more. We've got Guofeng in charge. And because we have five times the amount of GDP and we have 91% influence, we're gonna go ahead and establish a dependent state. The Chinese Republic is now our puppet. I'm going to build non-stop in their territory. I'm going to build like a madman in China, annex them, and then India will reign supreme in Asia. And it's finally reached the finishing point, 1996. We are three years early, but I can't move further than this without the game crashing and stopping. So with this being our finishing point, let's have a look and see where we rank. Our goal was to be the richest nation in the world and we have $2.1 trillion. Soviet Union have 1.5. The United States have 1.6 and France have 1.4. We are the richest nation in Asia and the richest nation in the world. We are the richest. We are the richest landmass. We are the richest country on the planet. But the question is, was it worth it? No, this was not worth it in the slightest. <laughs> But anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to end it for today. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, don't forget to, of course, click the like button and or subscribe. Share with friends that grow for the channel, all that fun stuff. And I will see you in the next video I do. So until then, all the best. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Ta-da!